Next one. If angle one and angle five are vertical angles, you guys remember vertical angles? Then it follows that vertical angles are congruent. And that is by the vertical angle theorem. Okay? Next one, you should all know. You should all know this. Azalea, you got your you got your review, Azalea? Remember the the all because you're exempting the the final doesn't mean you're exempting the the homework that is the final review. Okay, because that's two homework grades. It's two daily grades. All right, so I'm going over this so that you guys can check your answers. Next one. If y equals 7 and x plus y equals 12, then x plus 7 equals 12. What, what, what's that property? Well, you guys should all know this. This is substitution property. When you know that y equals 7, well, then you just plug it in. You just plug it in. You, you, got, you got this? You got your notes? You got this? Who's, where's yours? You don't have it at all. Where, you, where's your backpack today? You got this, Lamar? It's right here in front of you. Yeah, get it out. It's it's a it's a homework. It's two homework grades. Who forgot theirs? You don't have it either. I didn't grab enough. I didn't grab enough. Well, the first two periods they all had theirs. So I guess you guys must be taking yours to lunch and and. Uh, Throwing it away with your with your lunch leftovers. Anybody else? Okay. Next one. Well, angle one and angle five are same side, same side interior angles. So you guys remember this? Same side interior angles. S S I A. That's the acronym. Well, what do we know? What do you guys remember about same side interior angles? Well, they're either congruent or they're supplementary. Those are those are the two things we learned about these angle relationships when we had parallel lines with a transversal. Okay, Re remember chapter two, we're talking about parallel lines with a transversal. We're, we're going to see that picture coming up here. So when I talk about same side interior angles, that means it's two angles on the same side of the transversal, and they're inside, they're in between the lines, they're in the highway I talked about. Well, if you remember, same side interior angles, they are supplementary. Supplementary. Now, supplementary means that they add up to 180 degrees. Complementary is when they add up to 90 degrees. And, and that theorem is just going to be the same side interior angle theorem. I'm abbreviating it, but that's what those letters, that's what that acronym stands for, same side interior angles. Okay? Next one. It says if segment CD is congruent to segment AB, then they switch it again. They switch it. So it's seg then segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Well, this is symmetric property again. I think, I don't know why they have this in t here twice. But I'm going to change this. I'm going to change this question, okay? Because this is what I think they, they, they wanted to say. If segment CD is congruent to segment AB, then I'm changing this, and I'm going to change this to the, the CD without the line above it, 
And when I have the two endpoints without the line, I'm talking about distance. I'm talking about length of that segment. And I'm going to just put equal. The congruence sign goes away and just becomes equal. And, and then the AB is just the endpoints without the segment above it. So this is what I think they meant to say for this question. If segment CD is congruent to segment AB, then the length CD is, is equal to the, to the length AB, or the distance between those endpoints. And this is definition of congruence. This is definition of congruence, OK? This is when we change between equal and congruent when we're talking about segments and when we're talking about angles, OK? This is what this does is sets us up for some algebra. It sets us up to be able to do algebra on a relation that we have. Okay, so that's a that's a bonus question that wasn't in the review. Question? All right. Next one. Or last one on this page. If angle 1 and angle 5 are corresponding angles, then they are blank by blank. Well, what do you remember about corresponding angles? They're either congruent or they're supplementary. Yeah, they're, they're congruent. So they are congruent, and that is by the corresponding angle postulate. OK? All right, that's the end of that page. Who needs? time to write this out. I'll give you 30 seconds to finish filling in your notes or checking your notes. What you working on? Chemistry. Practice test. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next page. So that was twelve. That was eighteen. So here's nineteen. This is when we talked about logic. All right. Are you ready, Nate? You ready, Green? All right. So if I have the following conditional statement, if P, then Q, that, that's what we start with. And this is P is my hypothesis. It can be anything. Like, I could say my hypothesis if I study for my final, OK? If P, if I study for my panel, final, then Q, then I will pass the semester, OK? That's my hypothesis. That's my conclusion. So this is like P and Q can be anything, anything you can think of. If I run to the end zone with the football, then I'll score a touchdown. It could be anything, OK? You just plug it in. P and Q are just placeholders for, for some statement. All right, so that's, that's what we start with. Now, the converse is switching the, the hypothesis and the conclusion. And we're just gonna, I'm just going to write it. It's gonna, I'm going to write it as cryptic. If Q, so the hypothesis is now the, or the conclusion is now the hypothesis, and the hypothesis is now the conclusion. All right? So if Q... Then, I'm sorry, I didn't put P in there. I'm sorry. That doesn't work. i got to put P in there. Then P, okay? Then P. Well, how did we, how did we, well, this is how we did it shorthand. We said Q, arrow, P, okay? So on the left is how we kind of did it in our notes, and then this is on the right is how we did it shorthand. They're, 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 they're trying to be the same. Next, my inverse. When I talk about inverse, I'm negating it. I make, I'm putting the word not in there. 
So this would be if not p, if not p, then not q, All right? And the way we did that in shorthand was we, we did this little squiggly line. And the squiggly line means not. Not P implies not Q. All right? Contrapositive. Contrapositive, the, the hypothesis and the conclusion, they switched. And then they also negated. They became not. So this one would be if not Q, then not P. And shorthand, that is uh, not Q, this is supposed to be a squiggly, implies not P. And the last one, biconditional, this was the one that was the easiest for you all. This was the one that we said if and only if. And it was just simply... P, if, and only if, Q, all right? And the way we, we, we had two different ways we, we wrote this. We wrote it as uh, P with the two Fs, if, and only if, Q, and we also did it with an arrow. We did it with an arrow, P, the double head arrow, if and, that means if and only if. That means it's like bidirectional. You guys remember bidirectional? Biconditional statements can go both ways. Okay? Because Q will imply P, P will imply Q. Okay? So if one of these is true, the other one's true. That's what biconditional statement is. And most definitions and theorems are biconditional statements, if you remember that. All right, let's go to some examples here. Let's go to some examples here. Well, our Okay, I'll give you a, I'll give you a minute. Okay, I'm coming. All right. So, this is my this is my example. If angle A and angle B are complementary angles, who remembers what complementary angles are? There are two angles added together that equals 90 degrees. That's right. So my statement has to do with if angle A and angle B are complementary angles. Well, that's, my, that's my hypothesis. That's what I start with right there. So that's what I'm going to write down. Angle A. And angle B are complementary angles. All right, that's my hypothesis. Well, my conclusion is they share a common side. They share a common side. So the hypothesis always starts after the if, the conclusion always starts after the then. All right. Well, now let's think about this. Is this statement true? Do, do two complementary angles have to share a common side? Well, let me draw some angles. Let me draw some angles. So if I have two angles here, angle A and angle B, and this is 90 degrees, well, these share a common side. So this is the example where it's true. Now, if you can think of what's called a counterexample or an example that shows this false, it's called a counterexample. Well, let's think about this. What if I had angle B here, and over here I had angle A? Okay? And, and the angle A was 25 degrees. And angle B was 65 degrees, All right? Well, these are not two adjacent angles. These aren't two angles that are right next to each other. They are two angles that do not share a common side. But 65 
degrees plus 25 degree measure of angle A, that still adds up to, to 90 degrees. So these are still complementary angles and they don't share a common side. This is what's called a counterexample. This is what's called a counterexample. So this is false. This is false. And, and right here, showing that this is my counterexample. My counterexample is I can have two angles that aren't next to each other, that don't share a common side. All it means to be complementary is that two angles add up to 90 degrees. They don't have to be next to each other. They don't have to share a common side. All right. Now they want us to, 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 to write the inverse. The inverse. Now the inverse is just negating both of these. So let's do that. So if angle A and angle B are not, we gotta negate it, not complementary angles, then I just abbreviated angles. Then they do not share a common side. That is the inverse of that statement, of that example. All right? Okay. So the final will have all matching. There's no fill in. There's no fill in short answer whatsoever. It's all matching, okay? Number 21. Here we've got two lines intersecting, and we've got three angles to consider. And it says that angle three and angle four are supplementary. Oh, that makes sense. They're a linear pair along a straight angle. So that's definition of linear pair, and linear pair by definition is supplementary. But it also states that angle four and angle five are supplementary. And then they're telling me the angle measure of angle five is 86 degrees. And it's asking, what is the measure of angle three? What is that equal? What are we going to do here? We're looking at this diagram. You guys got a strategy? They want us to find or figure out the measure of angle three. What do you think, Joshua? You got anything? So what can you say? What can you say about the angle angle three and angle five's relationship? What kind of angles are those? They are. They're vertical angles. This statement, this 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 problem's telling us that they're supplementary. Well, looking at the diagram, it's obvious they're vertical angles. And what do we know about vertical angles? They're congruent. So if we know the measure of one vertical angle is 86 degrees. Well, the other one has got to be 86 degrees also. That's your answer. So they're giving us all this information. And by looking at that diagram, you know that they're vertical angles. So we don't have to do any figure in here. We don't have to do anything, any sort of computation or addition or subtraction. All right, that was chapter two. I, there's 35, if I remember right. But I got I got to look at it. I haven't printed it off yet. I'll do that. I'll do that today or tomorrow morning, and I'll be able to, I'll be able to answer your question better tomorrow. All right, let's go to twenty two. Now we're in chapter three. We're in chapter three, and we've got all these angle relationships. So angle two and angle A, or what kind of angles? What's that relationship there? We've got a transversal. And we've got two other lines where that transversal is intersecting. 
Doesn't look like it's a parallel line, but th there's no statement about those other lines. So what do you know about this relationship between angle two and angle eight? What does it look like? Yeah, they're they're in the they're they're corresponding angles. These are in the same position to where the, that intersection point is. They're to the right of that point. So these are corresponding. These are corresponding angles. All right. Now it's asking us the relationship between angle nine. And 13. Well, here's our transversal here. So there's our transversal. And then we've got these two angles. So are they on the same side of the transversal or are they on alternate sides of the transversal? They are, they're alternate. Are they in between the two lines or are they outside the lines? So these are alternate interior angles, alternate interior. And I'm abbreviating angles, okay? And what do you know about alternate interior angles? They're either congruent or they're supplementary. That was the properties that we talked about. What do you think? You got 50-50 chance of getting this right. What do you think, Lamar? Are they congruent or are they supplementary? Pass fail. Congruence right answer. You pass. All right, alternate interior angles, guys, they are congruent. Okay? So that's your strategy. When you have two things that are equal to each other, you're going to put them in the equation form. So we know the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle seven. So now we're just going to substitute what we know those are. Well, angle one is eight x minus 4. Measure of angle 7 is 6x plus 24. The rest is algebra. You guys know algebra. You guys know algebra. All right, let's go to the next part, the next question. So this one says the measure of angle 13 is 10x minus 6. The measure of angle 12 is 4x plus 18. Well, let's find these. So 12 is there. And 13, we already talked about 13. And we've got the same. We've got the same transversal. Let's put that transversal in blue. So that's our transversal. So are these on the same side of the transversal? Or are they on alternate sides of the transversal? They're the same side. So are they interior? Or are they in between the two lines? Or are they exterior, outside the lines? Well, these are inside. So these are same side interior angles. OK, remember S, S, I, A. Okay, same side interior angles. And what do you guys remember about same side exterior angles? Are they congruent or are they supplementary? They are supplementary. Same side starts with the letter S. They are supplementary. So that means when we add these two together, so when I, measure, when I add the measure of angle 13 and I add the measure of angle 12, we know that their sum is 180. We know their sum is 180. So now we just substitute what we know those are. Well, we know the measure of angle 13 is 10x minus 6. And we know the measure of angle 12 is 4x plus 18. And that's equal to 180. So we're going to solve for the algebra. You guys want me to do this one? Or you help me. You tell me what, what we're going to do first. We're going we're gonna to combine like terms, right? So we got to add 4x and 10x. What's 10x plus 4x, Dylan? Yes, sir. It's 14x. 
And then I have a minus 6, and I'm adding 18. What do I get there? So I get 12. I'm adding 12. And that's equal to 180. So now I'm solving for x. I'm solving for x. So when I subtract 12 from both sides, we're going to subtract 12. I need to move this up a little bit. Subtract 12. Subtract 12. I get 14x equals 168. 14x equals 168. Last step. What's my last step here, Stephen? What am I going to do here? Divide. Yep, I'm dividing by 14. 168 divided by 14 means x equals 12. And that's your answer. That's what they're looking for, the value of x. That's the value of x. Okay. All right. All right. So that's the end of that page, right? Is that the end of that page? Oh, no, I got two more down there. Yeah, that's the end of that page. Let's find 24 now. Or 23. Yep, that's the next one right there. Okay, so now we got some line relationships. If line P is parallel to line Q, how do we show parallel? Well, we put little arrowheads on here. We put little arrowheads on here. Okay? Yep, we'll finish it tomorrow. We will finish this tomorrow. That's the goal. Okay, so think about this. If the measure of angle 5 is 3 times larger than the measure of angle 3, find the measure of angle 1. Well, here is angle 5, and here is angle 3. What type of angles do I have there? What's their angle relationship? Well, these are same side interior angles. What do you know about same side interior angles? Yeah, they're supplementary. So first, let's do something with this. If, if the measure of angle 5, the measure of angle 5 equals 3 times the measure of angle 3, OK? All right, that's our first equation. That's right from the information given us. Now we know that these are supplementary, so I know that the measure of angle 5 plus the measure of angle 3, I know that that adds up to 180 degrees because they're supplementary. They are same side interior angles. Okay? Well, what are we going to do with this information? I have two equations. So guys, what did I just do? We have a system of equations we can solve now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve the system of equations by plugging in what I know the measure of angle 5 is. What I know the measure of angle 5 is. I'm substituting in 3 times the measure of angle 3. So let's do that. So this is going to go away. It's going to become 3 times the measure of angle 3. And, I'm still, and then I'm adding one measure of angle 3, and that's equal to 180. 
So first step, I try to combine like terms. What can I combine there? Well, these these are the same. Now it's, this isn't a, 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 this isn't a variable, but yet it kind of is. It's three things. It's measure of angle three, but I can treat it just like an x. I can treat it just like an x. I have four measure of angle three, and I'm adding one measure of angle three. What's one plus three? That's four. So guys, I have four times the measure of angle three that's equal to 180. So now I can solve for the measure of angle three. What am I going to do? How do I solve this? Yeah, I got to divide by four. And when I divide 180 by four, I get the measure of angle three equals 45 degrees. That's, that's, that's what it is. So the measure of angle three is 45. And now we got to solve for the measure of angle one. And if you see angle one and angle five are corresponding angles. So all we got to do is plug in right here for the measure of angle five. We plug in 45 there. So by the, the miracle or magic of algebra, this measure of angle three becomes 45. So measure of angle five is equal to three times 45. What's three times 45? Well, that's equal to 135 degrees. That is the answer for the measure of angle five, but it's also what the measure of angle one is because Angle one, the measure of angle one and the measure of angle five are the same. They're equal by the fact that they are corresponding angles. Okay? Questions on that? That was a lot. That was a lot. We had to figure out supplementary. We had to solve a system of equations. And then we had to solve for the measure of angle one by matching it with an angle relationship that was a corresponding angle with angle five. All right. This should all be reviewed for you guys. This now is, uh, we're talking about some algebraic equations, point slope. And here's my point slope equation. Which of these is my, my what is the slope of this equation? And what is the slope of a line parallel to this equation? What do you know about a line parallel to another algebraic line? If, if What's the slope of this equation, I should ask? Well, 180 is, is a degrees. So slope which could be a decimal. It could be a fraction. Yeah, it's 1 over 7. Thank you, online. So right here, guys, this is my this is my slope. It's one seventh. So if my slope is one seventh, what is the line that's parallel to this slope? That's got to be one seventh, because for a parallel line, it has to have the same slope. So the answer is one seventh. All right. For a parallel line, the slope has to be the same. So what about a line? We're going to write an equation of a line that's parallel to the equation, but goes through that point. Well, we got to write down our point slope form. This is y minus y1 equals our slope times x minus x1. Now, these are my points, and this is my slope. So I already know what my slope is. I know that 1 7th is my slope, so I'm going to plug it in. And I'm going to plug in my y, and this is equal. And I plug in my x, and then i got to just plug in this point. Well, this is my x. This is my y. So my x goes right here. Next, this is my x1. This is my y1 over here. 
That's my line. That's my equation. So the answer is y minus 1 equals 1 seventh times x minus 2. And they're not asking us to simplify it. They're not asking us to put it in the slope intercept form. They're just asking us to plug it in, show the point slope form. Okay? Next one. Next one. This is going to be my last problem. This is going to be the last one. It's asking us to find x. Find x if t s is parallel to t. So these are parallel lines. I'm going to put little arrowheads in here. So we got to think about this. What kind of what kind of what kind of angles do we have here? Well, these are. These, these don't have an angle relationship, right? But we, we can come up with something. Because this, if I call this angle B right here, if I call this angle B, well, this and angle B are corresponding angles. And angle B and this expression, they are a linear pair, OK? And linear pairs are supplementary. So this is your strategy. Well, if B, if angle B and this expression are corresponding and congruent angles, well, this expression has to be supplementary to this other one. So that's our that's our that's our strategy. So nine x minus seven plus seven x minus five adds up to 180 degrees. The rest is algebra. The rest is algebra. Okay? All right, that's it. That's all I'm gonna that's all I'm gonna go over today. Um, you got the rest of the class period to ask me questions.